So let's think about how to use this. Um, we're going to do a few examples, then we're going to expand out on this, right? So let's consider now. Now you've got like a new tool in your sandbox to play with. We know what happens to, to e to the x if you differentiate it. But what if you have some of its close cousins? So for example, suppose you had something like this guy, right? Now if you want to, you could pop this into Desmos. It would give you a derivative. It's an exponential. So unsurprisingly, when you differentiate, you get another exponential out. But what exponential will you get? We have a rule for dealing with these guys, right? When you have not just a function, but a function with another function tucked inside it, right? Do you think back? Do you remember the name of the rule that we use to deal with differentiating functions with other functions inside them? We call this the chain rule, right? In fact, you may or may not recall one of the longer names. It's a bit awkward, so we don't tend to use it. One of the longer names for the chain rule is the function of a function rule. Sometimes the textbook will call it this, right? There's a function, and this is a function of a function, okay? So when we differentiate this, what we need to say is, what's the derivative of the inside function, and what's the derivative of the outside function? There's my inside function right there. What's the derivative of that thing? Just 5x, what's its derivative? It's just 5, isn't it? Like, just forget about this for a second. You know how to differentiate that. It's just a 5. There's the derivative of the inside. Now I'm going to deal with the derivative of the outside. What is the outside? It's e to the power of some stuff, right? What happens when you differentiate e to the power of some stuff? Think carefully. Remember, this is a unique function. It's different to our polynomials we've been dealing with before. Yeah. When you differentiate e to the power of some stuff, you get the, this e to the, it doesn't change. It doesn't change, right? So when you have a look at this, right? It doesn't change. You still have e to the power of some stuff. In this case, the stuff is 5x. Now, Value. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Right now, go to Desmos, right? Don't, don't just take my word for it, right? Go ahead, put in e to the 5x. This time, instead of getting Desmos to do the derivative for you, I want you to put underneath this guy. Have a look. 5e to the 5x. Does it match up with what Desmos hands you? Have you got the same kind of thing? Have a look. Be careful with what you're popping in there. <laughs> You, got, you might have a lot of graphs there. You may need to clean that up a little bit. So it was e to the 5x. e to the power of 5x. <laughs> All right, so this is what I've got. Now, I know some of you will be like, wait a second, I can't really quite tell if this is right. You may have noticed when you went into settings, you can change a whole bunch of things. So one of the things I've done is, you know how you had your original graph, and then your blue one was the derivative function, right? So that's our answer. That's what we're trying to get. But then we did this by hand. So I got 5e to the 5x with you. I've popped that in as a green dotted graph. So if you go into settings, you can change it, because otherwise you kind of can't see what's really going on, because you're just on top of each other. Hopefully, you can see, this is not just close. This is exactly the same function. Okay, So 5e to the 5x is my derivative when I get out the bottom. Okay, Does this make sense? Following? Okay. Let's try another one. And this time, I'm not going to do it up on the screen. I'm going to get you guys to test it out, right? Instead of, excuse me, the derivative of e to the 5x, can you tell me what the derivative of e to the x minus 1 is? Can you work out what that should be? Have a go. See what you end up with. Okay, help me out, because I saw a few of you have the answer. Uh, we want to start with the chain rule, the derivative of the inside, what is it? It's just 1, isn't it? Because there's our inside function, x minus 1. I know how to differentiate that. It's just 1. There's the derivative of the inside. Now I deal with the outside. What is the outside? It's, it's e to the power of some stuff. 
What have we established when you differentiate e to the power of some stuff? You get, it just hands it straight back to you, right? So I get this again, right? You're like, wait a second. That means but there's another function that equals itself. Ah, okay, now what's going on, right? I said before, this is unique, right? And then we got something which seems to be doing the same thing. Now, why should this be the case? Tell me, what is the difference between this guy and this guy? There's a minus one. I should have underlined this one over here. It's just minus one, right? But it's minus one, it's attached to the x. Do you notice that? Yeah. Right? What happens if you take a function like this, right? Any function you like. And then what you do is you attach a minus one to the x. What happens to it? What's the difference between these two? It moves, right? Where does it move? It moves one unit to the right. In this case, you had the vertex at the origin at zero. And now you've got the origin one unit to the right at one, okay? So in other words, these are the same thing, right? Just positioned differently. And these two functions are the same function, just in a different spot. Do you see that? I've just moved it over, so no surprises, the derivative has not changed. Does this make sense? Yeah.